Hi, this is Shu with a, the review of the Nike Auto Max or Nike Adapt Auto Max. As you can see, the silhouette reminds you a lot of the Nike Air Max 90. Uh, Air Max 2090 was the earlier version of this, which was a newly uh, new interpretation, new rendition, upgraded, more stylish version of the Air Max 90. But 2090 had this crazy hard shell around the Max uh, cushioning on the heel, so the heel had a really hard thud and you won't have a smooth transition. I mean, this also has this crazy plastic plate here from the uh, from the heel cup all the way down to the outsole. So this plastic, yeah, this plastic's not that great. I mean, it, it kind of provides some unnecessary resistance, but it's not as bad as the 2090s, but it's not the kind of comfortable ride that you would come to expect from a modern Nike air shoe, uh, especially when they actually use Cushlon for the midsole, which feels great, but you don't really feel that much of the cushion. Here's another side effect of the design. Uh, the Adapt system, the huge motor, it's probably about this chunky. Usually uh, for the basketball shoes, like the Adapts or the uh, Adapt BB or the Adapt BB2, they have this somewhere closer to the heel than the forefoot. Uh, it's somewhere here and you actually have the zoom turbo on the forefoot. And now this one, it actually has a rigidity of the motor uh, pinching your forefoot around the pinky toe area, right below that joint. So the cushioning actually is pretty hard up to about this point. So the forefoot, even though they use cushion, they're killing it, they're neutralizing what it can do by having that. Although it is a lot lower than the heel, so there's a huge dramatic heel to toe drop. It feels like you're walking on um, high heels somewhat, not drastic, but somewhat close to that. Doesn't really feel like a natural runner. Um, also a pattern, yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, it's uh, pretty durable waffle pattern, so that's decent. Um, another thing about this shoe is that the Adapt system, uh, I've, I've complained about the Adapt BB2 not being able to really lock down the whole upper part, just more so on these areas and not so much here. But this one, you actually feel like there's only like two wires being pulled and tightened. It, the shoe itself is a pretty snug fit on the upper. Uh, even it's got pretty much like a one-piece upper, so you really have to like really open it up to really squeeze your foot in. I mean, it's not as hard as the Soldier Tense, but it's still, it's quite inconvenient for the fact that you're having this auto lay system, but you still have to put in your foot in and you feel like it's already a pretty snug fit, and then you want that auto tightening system, which doesn't really work too well. Uh, if you look at it from just without your foot in, it feels like it actually tightens quite a bit, right? Yeah, but you won't feel this sensation. Uh, your foot is not my wrist, so you won't reach this level. Uh, by the time it reaches a certain level of tightness here, it won't be able to tighten any further, which means there won't be any uh, additional tightening of laces from down there. So you just feel a little bit of a lace loop tightening around your uh, ankle. That's about it. So. It defeats the purpose of having this crazy expensive motor that um, jeopardizes the overall cushioning. Another side effect, I mean, another bad side to this shoe, the upper is pretty thin and breathable, uh, neoprene-like uh, material. But because it's so thin, you actually, ha can, you, can you see my toes? If these were my toes, yeah, they stick out. You, you can actually see the shape of your foot. And if you have toes, like certain people, for me it's okay, but I know certain people have their toenails like really pointing upwards to the sky and if you have that kind of a foot it's going to be constantly chafing and rubbing off and this material is not going to last especially because it's got a heel to toe drop that's quite significant your toes will be constantly uh, being abrasive against the upper around the toe box area so durability is going to be an issue um design i think it's it's a beautiful design uh, I know Tinker Hatfield has got this thing for realizing that uh, that shoe they had in the Air Mags which is the Nike version of the auto lacing system that didn't work, so he wanted to make it work. Yeah, but uh, go back to the drawing board and make sure that each lace loop can be tightened individually or even if it's together, synchronized, at least try to come up with a system that can actually lace the whole thing down, not just two pulleys and two knot two knots. Uh, it's got a good padding all around to ensure that your foot is contained around the ankle and around the Achilles. 
Mm, the insole is a decent EVA insole. The cushioning is not too bad. Again, it's very high off the ground. Uh, the cushion line is, again, neutralized because of the motor that's rigid and hard beneath your foot. So it's, it's quite an enigma. Uh, nice design, nice attempt. Uh, yeah, let's not forget the basics of the shoe, which is to have some decent cushioning. This is supposed to be a lifestyle motor, apparently, to, according to some reviewers. Uh, even if that's the case, you are Nike. Uh, even when you make, uh, you know, casual shoes, sometimes athletes actually don't mind wearing them for professional games. That's the way it should be. That's the way Nike should strive to be all the time. Uh, so it's, considering Nike's reputation, it's quite disappointing the price point it's it's on a huge discount these days uh, 50 to 60 percent discount so you can actually get these in a decent price tag which is what you would pay for an ordinary uh, Nike signature shoe of certain some popular athlete or some renovated uh, revolutionary product that Nike is releasing like the vapor maxes they do cost close to 200 and so this is quite cheap but if you want to experience the adapt technology on a shoe that you can actually wear and walk around, I would highly recommend the Adept BB2 or 2.0 instead of the uh, Automax.